afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Okay, we are continuing on with factorizing. What is the first step we do for any factorizing? Whenever you see the word factorizing, what's the first thing you do? Look for the common factor. Well done. Look for the common factor. Look for the highest common factor. And that worked well when we had two terms. However, today we're going to do factorizing quadratic trinomials. There's two fancy words in there. The word quadratic. What does quadratic mean? Four. That's quadruple, not quadratic. So if you quadruple something, that means you times it by four. Quadratic has nothing to do with four. Quartics have something to do with four, which we learn in year 11. To the power of two. Excellent. To the power of two. Can we say, see in all these questions, the highest power of the unknown is two? Yeah. Yes. So the highest power must be two. If an expression has an x squared term or a squared, so the highest power of the unknown is 2, it's called a quadratic expression. Are we all clear on that? Yeah. Now, I've also used the word trinomial, and the word tri should be giving you a hint. We raise hands and answer. Yes? 3. So what's 3? Three? 3 terms. 3 terms. So all these expressions have 3 terms. Yes? Do we all agree with that? Yes. yes. Now, actually I'm going to change this to this one. Now, so do all these have three terms? Yes. yes. So these are called quadratic trinomials. So the first step is again look for a common factor. So it does not matter how many terms, shush, uh, uh, try, uh, how many terms an expression has, you always look for a common factor. So let's do that. Is there any common factor? No. 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 So that's it. We move on to the next step. If the coefficient of the leading term is 1, we use a method called AB method. Now, I don't know if it's actually called AB method. I call it AB method. Okay? So, is what's the leading term? The term with the highest power. Is the leading term x squared? Yes. yes. Is the coefficient of x squared 1? Yes. yes. If that is the case, we move on to the next step. AB method. What is AB method then? We need to find two numbers, A and B, such that when you times together, you give your la get your last term. What's the last term? Five. And the same two numbers, A and B, when added together, give you your middle term, which is positive six in this case. Is that right? So I want you to draw this template every time you do this question. Two numbers times together to give you the last term. Same two numbers added together to give you six. Now, you don't have to, first of all, you don't have to talk. You don't have to give the answer straight away. So I'll be thinking, what are the possible ways I can get five? One times five or five times one? Yeah. It's an easy one. There's no other way, really, is there? <laughs> no. Okay. So can I write then one times five? Yeah. Okay. Now let's check. One plus five. Doesn't that give us yeah. six? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. That means one and five are our numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. What do we do with those numbers? So, what was the unknown? X. X. So, we're going to write it in factorized form. What was the first number? One. one. Positive or negative? Positive. So, we write plus one. What was the ne next number? Positive five. Positive five. So, basically, you have factorized it. You can expand it using FOIL or using a CAS and you should get the answer. Is that clear now? Yes. Yeah. So two numbers A and B, the times together to give you the last term. Same numbers added to give you the middle term. But it only works if the coefficient of the leading term is 1. Happy with that? Yes. Next one, eyes on the board, screens down. Look for a common factor. Is there a common factor? Yes. yes. What is the common factor? This term doesn't have a, so a is not common. Two. Two. Does two go into two? Yes. Is a divisible by two? Yes. Is six divisible by two? Yes. So congratulations, we have a common factor. Yes? yes. So, we take our common factor out, and then we need to divide every single term inside the bracket by that common factor. So two divided by two is? One. So a squared remains. What's a divided by two? Four. Plus or minus? Plus. Plus. Well done, you guys are so smart. <laughs> Six, I mean it. I'm not being sarcastic this time. Usually I am. <laughs> Six divided by two? Three. Are we all happy with that? Yes. Now, if the coefficient of leading term is one, if, is the coefficient of a squared 
upon? Yes. Can we use AB method? Yes. Right. However, what do I do with the two? Do I just eat it because it's nearly lunchtime and we're hungry? No. No. What do I have to do? We shut. <laughs> My curry and rice are much better than the two here, so I'm not going to eat it. What do I do with that too? Leave it like that? Yes. Well done. Now, shh. So we now know that our answer will look something like this. A and A plus and minus something. Is that right? Yes. The numbers we're going to find using which method? A, B, A, B. That's a so smart. You can teach next time. So, shh. Numbers. Multiply together to give you your last term. <coughs> and same numbers added to give you your middle term. So what are the possible ways we can write 3? 1 times 3? Yes. Yes. Does it matter whether I write 1 times 3 or 3 no, times 1? No. no. It doesn't matter. No one cares. Huh. Now, do they add up to 4? Yes. yes. So what are our numbers? 1, one positive one, 4, one, and positive 4. Positive 1 then? Positive 3. Does, no, positive 1 and positive 3. Your A is 1, your B is 3. Does it matter which one I write first? No. Because in multiplication, order does not matter. No. So I'm going to write 3 first and then 1. Is this easy? Yes. yes. Excellent. It's made easy. Maths made easy. Well done. Next one. Negative. Is there a common factor? No. It's just one here. There is no common factor. Now, AB method. Two numbers times to give you negative 18. Uh, I don't know what the answer is here. Same two numbers added to give you a positive answer. Now listen carefully. This is a tricky one. First of all, forget about the negative sign. What two numbers will multiply together to give 18? 1 and 18? Yes. But we can't do anything to 1 and 18 to get 3, can we? 3 and 6. 6 times 3? Yes. Now, 6 times 3 is hands down. Negative 8, positive 18. We want a negative 18. So that means either 6 negative. needs to be negative or 3 needs to be negative. Yeah. However, which one will be negative depends on our answer here. When we add them, we want a positive answer. So don't we want our bigger yeah. number to be positive? Yeah. So it will be positive 6 and negative 3. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's why writing this template here helps. You can erase it. You can add the signs and then erase it. Try it other way. So it's about trial and error. Does that make sense? Yes. Because we know that 6 yes. times negative 3 is negative 18 and 6 plus negative 3 is 3. Three. So, what are our numbers? 6, six and, and negative three. 3. What are our numbers? 6 and negative 3. Well done. So, can I write it as plus 6, negative 3? Yes. That's it. Factorizing trinomials. So, we've done factorizing quadratic trinomials when the coefficient of the leading term is 1. What's the method we use? Well done, you guys. Well done. Awesome. Copy.